To write the net ionic equation for CuCl2 plus K3PO4, this is copper 2 chloride plus potassium phosphate, we first need to balance the molecular equation. It looks like we could put a 3 here. That would balance the coppers. Then we need to have a the phosphates. We need a 2 here. And then it looks like we'd have to have a 6 in front of the KCl. So that would be the balanced molecular equation. After that, we can write the states for each one of these substances. Chlorides are very soluble, so that's going to be aqueous. It's going to dissociate into its ions in water. Potassium phosphate should be soluble, but we could look it up on a solubility table here, and we could find potassium right here, and then we have phosphates over here. So that's soluble. So we can write AQ for that. And then copper phosphate here, we find our copper here, and we go over again, phosphate. That has an I, so this is insoluble. It's going to be a solid. It won't dissolve in water. In fact, when the reaction happens, this will be a precipitate. It'll fall to the bottom of the beaker or the test tube. And then chloride's very soluble, so we're going to put an AQ after that. So we have the states. Next, we want to split the strong electrolytes. They're going to dissociate into their ions. So to do that, let's take a look. We need to know the charge. For chlorine on the periodic table, that has a 1 minus charge. Since I have two of these minus charges here, this has to be 2 plus on the copper. Potassium, group 1, so that's going to be a 1 plus. And then the phosphate, we can see that we have three positive charges, so this has to be a 3 minus. And if you look this up on a table of common polyatomic ions, you'd see it's always 3 minus. So over here, we have our 3 minus. This is a 2 plus for each one of these coppers, potassium, and then chlorine. Now that we have the charges, we can split it up pretty easily. We have Cu, 2 plus. That would be aqueous. I won't write that each time. And the 3 here means we have 3 of those. Plus, we have the Cl minus. That's the chloride ion. We have 2 times 3, 6 of those, plus we have 3 of the potassium ions times 2, so 3 times 2, 6 of those, and then we have the phosphate ion, PO4, 3 minus, and this 2 applies to everything, so we have 2 of those, 2 phosphate ions. Those are our reactants. Now we can do the products. When we do net ionic equations, we actually don't split up solids, liquids, or gases. So since this is a solid, it's at the bottom of the test tube. It's not broken apart into ions. We just leave it like it is. It'll be Cu3, and then that PO4 with the 2 around it. That'll be a solid. It'll stay together. Plus, we have the potassium ion. That does break apart, 6 of those. Plus, we have 1 times the 6 six chloride ions. This is what we call the complete ionic equation, also called the total ionic equation. At this point, we can cross out what are called spectator ions. They're on both sides. They're in the reactants and the products. So if I look here, I see 6Cl- in the reactants and 6Cl- in the products. Cross it out. I have six potassium ions here, six here. Cross it out. But that's the only thing that I have on both sides that I can cross out. That leaves me with the net ionic equation. That looks like this here and then this here. That's it. So let me clean this up and write the states in, and then we'll have a nicely written net ionic equation for CuCl2 plus K3PO4. And this is the net ionic equation for CuCl2 plus K3PO4, copper 2 chloride plus potassium phosphate. One of the key things to remember, when we have something that's insoluble, that's a solid, it's at the bottom of the test tube, we don't break that up in our net ionic equation. Only strong electrolytes are broken up. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.